in order to escape hell as a fundamental concept for the penalty of sin within this human world and this construct of ideology and systems, we have to look at the potential threat in the future of a lake of fire situation for the unrepentant sinners of the end of days who will burn consciously, posthumously, and forevermore in the Satan's shit pit of the sin. So if we look at the situation, we find there are eight primary hellfire sins you can get into trouble for. These are... Sexual immorality. That's a big one. Porn stars, it means, generally. The original Greek in the Revelations is pornoi. P-O-R-N-O-I-S. This means porn stars, as well as people who have an aversion to chunky ferrets and benders, and general perverts and idolaters and adulterers, and fornicators and pedophiles. They're all going to be burning forever in the lake of fire. So what's the solution in a rearguard action of defense against the pact of being sexually immoral? Well, simply don't be sexually immoral. The antithesis the sexual immorality within this construct is purity. Okay, second, murdering. That is one of the eight health five sins, so don't kill people. It's quite simple, this one. Most people can get away with this one. Most people are pretty good at not killing people. That's just, it takes quite a lot of hate and anger and disgust to thrust a knife into someone else's heart and take away their God-given right to existence in the universe of sentient wonders. So, you know, murder by, uh, murder on mass, by the way, is called war. And uh, nations do that when they're not getting enough that they want from another people. And those people are being hostile, aggressive, nefarious, and generally criminal. In which case, you get one load of people murdering another load of people. But if you do it in the name of a flag on a nation, it's totally acceptable, right? If you do it on your own principles, it's an absolute crime. Either way, you could argue both are crimes. But, you know, we wouldn't have won World War II without bumping off a few of the other murderers on the other side. You know, the baddies. So here we go. Idolatry. Now this one's going to set the cat among the pigeons. Okay? Idolatry is a huge problem in uh, Christianity and other religions. But of course, if we look at Islam, we can see that their entire cult is essentially an idolatrous cult to a false prophet that we don't recognize in Christianity. Okay? So idolatry is one reason so many more people go to hell. It's worse sin on, in the last days being an idolater to a false god than it is to be a thief, okay? You will notice in the eight hellfire sins, thieving isn't technically one of them. Although it's still a sin. It's always going to be a sin. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Do not steal. But it's not technically one of the eight hellfire sins from Revelation. And that's probably a good reason for that. Okay, so we're moving on. Using an integrational field curve vector, we got one, two, three. What else? Vile. God hates the vile, the abominable, the iniquitous, the deplorable, the disgusting, the horrible, the foolhardy, the moronic, the insidious, the evil, the corrupt, the criminal, the... Ugh. God hates all them. So they all fry too in the lake of fire, which is coming for a lot of people in the future. Okay, what else we got? Lying. Lying, you may be interested to know, is technically a hellfire sin in the apocalypse. So... What's the antithesis to lying, children? That's right. It's be honest and tell the truth at all times. It's not that hard, as Mark Twain said. Always tell the truth, because if you lie, you'll have to remember the lie. Okay? This is how I know I got lied to at school once by my good friend. Because years later, I said, Did you really sleep with Mrs. Gatwood? And he said, No. But I distinctly remember him telling me at school years ago that he did. And he got naked with this woman in particular. And I found out years later, my dreams were shattered. It was all an illusion, a fabrication, a lie. And now I realize he was just wishful thinking at a young age. Anyway, silly sausages. Liars, all liars, no exceptions, burn in hell. Which might come as some bad news to you mortals out there. But, you know, let's just remember, God does not like lying. He likes the truth. Okay? And if you lie and make up shit and cast aspersions and gossip over bullshit, chances are you'll be making like a hot winged turkey come Christmas. And frying tonight. So what else we got? We got, uh, we got pharmacia, which is translated often into sorcery. But pharmacia actually stems from the original Greek, of course, as well. And uh, it actually alludes to drugs, hard drugs. I don't consider cannabis a hard drug. I consider it a, a herbal remedy from God and a very effective one to those it benefits. However, Hard drugs, such as chemicals, 
you put in your body fuck you up immeasurably, and I know through bitter experience. Okay? I've repented for my use of hard drugs way in the past, and it's really just not a great idea to stick things in your mouth that could turn you do lally on a whim. Okay? LSD is one of the most dangerous drugs you'll ever come across in your life, and it can change you in one instance forever, and not in a good way. The mental hospitals are full of people with uh, acid problems and drug-induced issues, and they're all barking mad, psychotic, and completely unreasonable. So I'd stay away from those places, because they're barking. Okay, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. We got two more. What are they? Living in fear, ladies and gentlemen, is a hellfire sin. Cowardice. Being afraid consistently. Shuddering like a pathetic yellow belly little motherfucker. In face of fear, you shouldn't fear if you can. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. That's fine, that's acceptable. Everyone should fear God, that is wise, okay? But beyond that, fear of others is usually pretty ignorant. Especially if they're hostile, ignorant, vile, murderous, sexually perverse, lying, idolatrous, or sorcerers, right? But we shouldn't fear them. We should become more powerful than them and know better than them and override them. Don't live in fear. No, no. We gotta escape this vector. So that's one. So we got, you know, what's the antithesis of fear? It's bravery. God wants us to be brave, loving, and powerful, and fearless in this world, my friends. And I know that because I am enlightened by God himself. So we got one last one. And this one's gonna really set the cat among the pigeons again. There's two cats among two groups of huge pigeons today in one symposium. And I'd like to finish it off by telling you that all unbelievers like atheists are gonna burn in the lake of fire. No two ways about it. All the scummy unbelievers like my old mate Tom, who thought he knew so much but an absolute div, are gonna burn in the lake of fire on judgment day for their wicked sins. This is because we now know there's a God thanks to quantum analysis after prayer and the molecular structure of the miraculous elements that have arrived in our mindsets and souls thanks to the worship of a divinity. And that in itself, that miracle which occurred to me in 2017 after prayer, among all the other epiphanies, is evidence that there is most definitely a supernatural high force called God in this universe, this operational atmosphere, which one could arguably, arguably say is sentient. So within the sentient atmosphere, you've got these eight hellfire sins. And the trick is not to do any of them. So let's just recap and go over the opposite, the antithesis of each of these sins so we can learn the pure path under God. Sexual immorality, be pure. Vile, don't be vile. Don't be nasty, don't be abominable, don't be grim, don't be gross, don't be ugly in your soul. Right? Be lovely. Lying, be honest. Farm care, don't touch hard drugs. Idolatry, reject your nonsense, bullshit ethnic religions. Murder, be harmless, not violent or fearful. Fearful? Fearsome. Or grim, or horrible, or evil. Fear, don't be afraid, be brave, be heroic, be fearless. That's great. Don't disbelieve, there's a God, we know that, we have evidence, they're just covering it up because it's too much for humanity to take in, right? We know that halos, angels, miracles, out of body experiences in the astral dimension, and prophetic visions are all real things that can happen in the mind of the chosen, okay? These things are fact now, supernatural, spiritual facts since 1995. If it happens to one person legitimately, it happens arguably to the rest of humanity by extension as a conduit of the divine knowledge thereof. So this is the situation we have. And in order to escape the lake of fire, you're going to need a two-bolt, three-series, upper-cluse re response vector coming through. And if you don't apply the two-fold, three-series, upper-field defense vector to your soul, soul theorem, then the chances are you could end up frank to that like a waffle. Like a goddamn waffle. Okay, so in order to escape hell, you need one word in your life. You need one word from the Bible that tells you the exact way to come back to God, I ask his forgiveness, and generally be absolved of all your gratia little ways beforehand. And that word, ladies and gentlemen, is repentance. To say sorry, to apologize, to make things good where they have been banned, to redeem yourself essentially in the eyes of the divine spirit by apologizing and making amends where you have made legitimate errors in this world. Okay? It's really quite simple. God does not want us to throw the whole of mankind into the lake of fire. And it's not biblical to say all people go to hell. Only these people go to hell. The chosen, the pure, the holy, the divine, the wonderful, and the sacred, 
They are saved, a countless number of them as well. So don't worry, there is forgiveness, there is mercy. But you must repent to God. And that's not Catholic doctrine, that's biblical doctrine. Okay, that's just fact. You read the Bible, you read, oh shit, we're in trouble. I'm going to say sorry to the Lord. And that's what you should do. And in that case, once you've done all that, and you say, sorry Jesus, I'm really ashamed of my behavior, and I'm going to change it to that. And in that case, you may, you may just escape damnation forever in the lake of fire, roasting in the Satan's hell pit, thinking you were so smart on planet Earth when you rejected, abused, humiliated, slandered, mocked, harmed, and betrayed and sin against the true Illuminatus of the modern world, which is me. Okay? So now we got that cleared up. Let's move on. I don't want to see none of you doing any of this shit. You understand me? Because all these things are a trip hazard into fucking death. And we're not going to do them anymore. Alright? This is a new change. Wipe the slate clean. Fresh start. We're going to repent before the Lord. And we're going to say sorry, Father. We did not mean to do these stupid things. It was an act of ignorance on all our parts. And we repent as one. And we say sorry. And please show us your mercy as we seek to give mercy to others who have wronged us. For this is the way. For this has to be the way. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an absolute spectacular privilege of mine to honor this symposium into religion today. And I hope you derive something meaningful from it. If you want to see the evidence that these eight hell fire sins are all eight hell fire sins in the apocalypse, and please read Revelation 21, verse 8. Thank you. It's been monumentally, miraculously wonderful.